in five. <laughs> in five. Five. Four. Four. Three. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's that chick AJ. Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers all 2021. Mark Chun, point your heads out. Bald head, straight hair, and braids. Welcome you all to the show. We are so glad to have you yes. in the room. You we know, are. the devil mm-hmm. tried to take me out of there. He did. But I got Tour. away. I'm glad you did. We, we got church announcements. We got church announcements. Ooh. Before we get started, last week in Utah, we actually sold out two shows. Come no, and yeah, the devil did. didn't think we could do it. If God don't do Neither, it. And it was some Hawaiites. Mm, yes, Hawaiites love us. They was in there like... Mm-hmm. Josh, a 55 year old white man. He pulled up on me. He's like, Are you Josh? I was like, Sure, I am. He's like, I just love what you and the Kev on stages are doing. I love it. Yeah, are you Josh? It is my, hilarious. My wife showed me Kev on stages, and I'm just happy to be here. I was oh, like, Well, we're happy to have They you, was sir. in the audience with cowboy hats on, Angel. Pendleton on with some boots. That's it. Yes. Man. Look at you unifying the people. You- Look at you. You Martin Luther King and you're all right. Martin Luther King. So this weekend we are in Tacoma. Uh, there's about 20, as the, as we film this, there's about 20 tickets left to five of the six shows. The Saturday show early is already sold out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then next week, hey. the debut album of hey. That Chick Angel in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Her hometown. Starting it just, it just hometown. worked out that way. It was crazy how it worked out that way. That's what I knew I was supposed to be doing this it did, And I'm so excited to see you. I'm and her excited. People by, and that show is actually, uh, one show is, I believe, sold out. Yeah, it is. The Saturday earliest sold out there, too. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and then after that, I believe we're in Boston, which I'm is excited. also selling crazy. It's going to be great. I have a church announcement. Mama Likes. Spring box is now live and it's almost sold out. So if you want a box, boom, buy the box. Go to shopmamalikes.com. I got some real cute stuff up in there, okay? <laughs> All right, let's get into it. The first item on the agenda. What is it? Little Yachty. Oh my god. Was on um the 85 South show. Yes, he was. And they friend, asked friend him uh mm-hmm. about his money spending. And, uh, you know, I came in the game at 18, 17. Come. I came at 17, got my first million dollar deal at 18. You know what I'm saying? Had never had any money before then. So, of course, I, you know, I done blew some money. You know what I'm saying? You know, but thankfully I caught on quick and I got, I got bored with like materialistic things. And I, it helped me like learn to devalue lots of materialistic things. You know, at first I used to value like all uh, 15 chains and watch and you know, I used to have eight cars <laughs> you know I, like i had eight eight, you know? I had eight cars you know? like eight you cars. selling any <laughs> <laughs> you know if you only want one i get the other seven <laughs> i was 19 you know so i was 19 years old so you know uh it taught me to just devalue everything i stopped caring about all that shit that at one point in my life i thought i needed to have i felt like i had to have you know and so now i and i'm still so young and i still got a long career ahead of myself i now know how to move you know it's not as important to me to go blow six figures on a bracelet you know something like that how much money you think you blew before you realized this <laughs> over 20 m's yeah <laughs> damn before you was like ha ah. i didn't need this yeah. like you was just looking at it like i didn't Need yeah, this. I no, didn't. No, no cap. Twenty yeah. them things. Oh, for sure. Twenty so, million. Angel. How <laughs> many Lexus trucks would I need? <laughs> How many? You, you would need a parking lot <laughs> to blow twenty M's on Lexus 20 trucks. Twenty million. <laughs> I don't know. Let me tell you what this did for me. First, perspective. Mm. Right, because mm-hmm. I mean, people, you know, they 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 think I am well off more than I may be, or they some people are That's spot, spot on. on. One dude in the comments <laughs> literally calculated my net worth, and I was like, "Wait, what? How uh, you do that? I don't remember what video, and it was unrelated to anything. He uh-huh. was just like, he probably owns cash this much, house is this much. And I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, like, well, no one. But listen. For me, and this is probably going to be true of Angel, a, too. He just has a board full of like, yes, stuff. Excel in your sheets. Literally, he <laughs> literally was spot on. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I think Angel and I are similar, and probably Josh as well. 
uh, one, we're not in the rap world. Flashiness is part of the thing. Right. Right. In in our industry, you don't have to flex as much. Mm-hmm. Right. In our personal lives, poverty is such a recent thing. Yes. Like the way we grew up and, yes. you know, I'm doing OK. But Amen. a couple of years ago, I was just mm-hmm. making ends meet. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I the amount of money I would need to make to waste 20 million dollars for me to waste Oh my God. I don't even like, and I'm, and I'm being serious. Yeah. Like I might, I have a nice car, mm-hmm. you know, and I have some shoes. Them things not really that expensive. Mm-hmm. The thought of just a hundred thousand dollar bracelet. That's crazy. I don't, I know maybe collectively as a family, my whole family, we could waste 20, but me as a person, I'm sure if I added my sisters and my mother, to it, yeah, you oh. got Mama Dorothy in there. Oh, Mama, oh, Mama Dorothy. likes. She'll be like, "Hold my drink." <laughs> Twenty million is what we're trying to waste. Uh, but yeah, me myself, <clears throat> like one, I am such a discount shopper. I I was like, <laughs> this is a true story. Um, this weekend, uh, this uh, one of our neighbors had told us about this one place. It's a liquidation place where you get stuff mm. for really cheap. And I was like, Marcus told me about it. I was going to buy us some um, new lighting fixtures for our house from a lighting store. And I saw the place the man was talking about. And I said, you know what? I'm going to check it out. Call Marcus. I'm going to check it out. Now, in my brain, I said, oh, Lord, if they had a spa, like a like an outdoor spa in here. Like a, I would like a jacuzzi? It. Yeah. I was like, I, I want a spa. That's a very mm-hmm. specific large item. That's what, what I, that's what, right? Mm-hmm. But let me tell you about my God. When I walked in, <laughs> the first thing I saw. Was a spa. Yeah, you did. You guys bought the spa? I bought the spa. I bought the spa. Marcus didn't want us to buy the spa. Was he was say, like, how did, you, how did you take it to the house? He, I had them deliver it. I said, I said, uh, Marcus, oh they got a spa here. God. He said, Angel, it's not time to get no spa. We got, the, the house is not, not, we don't have furniture for certain rooms. But I was like, they got a spa at the liquidation. That. The, then they're never there. <laughs> they got at, a spa down at the liquidation. At the liquidation place. They it, don't get spas all the time. It's not easy to find a spa either. It's not easy. This spa is almost a $9,000 spa in real life. Got it for $3,500. Down at the, because it's the liquidation. At the, liqui- the liquidation. That's a liquidation $3, type of price. Mm, $3,500. That's, that's all right. It, come that's on. Right. That's mighty fine. You can't, that's a deal you can't pass no, up, ain't you? Can't. That's ordained. That's ordained. That was God. It was God. I said, listen, I got a uh, check from Cascade coming in because mm-hmm. I did some brand you deals was, for You me. had did them dishes. You I was said, like, this is times. me. I do this all the photos. time. Every night. I wash it. <laughs> Wore my mama likes robe in there. I was like, we're going to do double promotion. Oh. I said, Marcus Cascade. You, did, you wore the FUBU hat and a gap ass. <laughs> Come on. I said, we're going to cross promote right now. I said, "Come, can we get the spa? Uh, so while I could have bought a regular spa with the cascade, like a one that was new, when you see one on the, the, the it mm-hmm. didn't have no top to it. So I was able to get the price down. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to ask you what they, what, so, what the liquidation there's, people there's, said. There's, what? there's Listen, always an open box thing. Oh, you know? absolutely. Not I an s- open top thing. This is I <laughs> said, does it have a, t- a lid, a top? They said, oh, we think, yeah, definitely. And I said, check. And they said, we don't have it. I said, oh. Then y'all gonna have to y'all gonna have to do something about this. Y'all gonna have to knock something off. Y'all gonna have to do something about this. I can't give you the price for what you thought you had, and it's not Uh, that. Yeah, we brought some we brought some money up off of that price. You hear me? (laughs) That was that's how I would be if I was a person. Because if he wasted twenty m's, let's say he had forty. Even probably with forty million, I'd be at the liquidation place. Like Marcus. They they got a they got a whole waterfall. We could do a water feature. You still think you're going down to the liquidation place where you got forty million? Yes, I will, and I'd be excited because I'm just gonna waste money. I think I could spend Give twenty million. Two spots. I couldn't waste twenty million. Okay, so explain I, the difference. I, listen, I have a big. Um, I would I would have a big real estate portfolio. Mm-hmm. I could easily, if y'all ever, if you want to know when I made it to myself, this is a key. And I don't know if I'll publicize it, if it actually happens. If I get a loft in New York City mm-hmm. as a second home, mm-hmm. that's when you're like, okay, now nah, Kev done did it. If you start seeing me in New York a lot and you see floor to ceiling windows uh-huh. and you see a creative space above and you see me there seven times in one year, then you'll know. Well, that's like 10 mil right there. That's what I'm saying. Now, when I, now when I got it, when I got it, got it, 
That's when. I, but I but see that's not wasting because that's still an investment to uh, me. Okay. Now I do waste here and there. Shoes are a waste, um, but I really don't spend as much money as I make it as it looks like. Oh. You know what I mean? Because I'd be like, bro, that poverty poor Kevin from El Paso. He'd be like, hey man, hey, you just never know. You could get canceled. What if you're, you don't, let me, okay. You want to talk about how ridiculous Kevin Fredericks can get? Please. Every tour at the beginning, I lose my voice, not lose it, but my voice gets strained mm-hmm. because I kind of go hard when I perform. Mm-hmm. I want to give people the best show of their life. I tend to go as hard as possible. And then when I'm doing podcasts and other shows, mm-hmm. that combination always strains my voice. Never, never fails. I buy all the cough drops. Josh can tell you, drink all the honey tea ever. And by and I, honey tea, he means like a splash of water. It's literally honey. enough to 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 make the honey liquefied. <laughs> oh, God. Honey tea is I've really never just seen so like so much honey poured into oh. a cup. Technically. And the cup was small already, too. Right. The oh. tea like bag's like really shot. just for decoration. It's cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> like it's cilantro. It's I really just need to get the hot honey there. Uh-huh. But n- it never fails. I'm like, my voice is gone. I'll never be able to talk. How will I make money? I can write movies. I can write without a voice. I don't mm. need to be able to talk. I can learn sign language. You know, we don't have enough people with movies with sign language, and then I could make it. But this is like, so this time when I went out, I was leaving for the plane. She was like, your voice is going to be sore. It'll be fine in a couple of days. I was like, you don't know me. Do you? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Do you? You didn't that, want me to call you in a panic? I could. <laughs> but by the time I get to New York loft, I would have had three houses in Houston, seven in Atlanta, Charlotte, Nashville. Nashville is actually a budding real estate market. Uh, so many people are leaving Atlanta for getting expensive, coming down to Nashville. I can believe it. And Nashville's becoming baby Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And then Hollywood, Nashville, I mean, Atlanta's already yeah. baby Hollywood. Yeah. Especially for blacks, it is Hollywood. Yeah. It's black Hollywood. Um, but anyway, uh, rappers, they can blow, rappers and athletes lead the league. In just spending in, money. In ridiculous purchases. I know. I wonder what that is because, like you said, you know, we've experienced being very broke so it's not as if they are the only ones that have ever been broke it's not Mm -hmm. as if i I wonder why and i understand i probably understand more so in rap than anything else because they do glorify the whole like bling bling you gotta wear a change you gotta have a nice car but like i don't know why it's that way for athletes like i i do know that there there has been a point in time where there has been like a lot of crossover in those two worlds as far as in like Mm -hmm athletes yep. having to be more like rock stars yes. than just an athlete. But, but I it, wonder why is that? It's not their rent. Their brand doesn't have to be that. It doesn't. That's Rappers, what I'm saying. It, I get it. It's hard rap. to be like, <laughs> I shop at TJ Maxx and still rap about whatever the heck you're going to rap about. I but, want rappers to be like, that would be dope. I mean, that's why that one white was that ceiling can't hold us. What's his name? Macklemore. Macklemore. <laughs> 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 Why? Why? I can't That's say you like turned into a black <laughs> mom. Like, you you naming that person by the stuff. What's the young house? man with the ceiling can hold he us? He talked about shopping at the. Uh, no, that was perfect. Oh, thrift shop. shop. Thrift shop. See, that was perfect. I know what I'm doing. You do. That I, wasn't the thrift shop song though. That's why it was funny because you. That was a different song. Uh, uh, Right, but that's how I like that song. I like the ceiling can't hold us. What's the white man with the We're ceiling can't hold us? We're going away from the point of the topic here, Ken. <laughs> but, like, yeah, athletes, I feel like they're more about, like, they don't have to. I, I feel like them being, having, you know, a lot of women that they smashing is probably more of their thing. That And I'm sure they're using Blue Chew when they're doing it because how else are they going to use the energy on the basketball court and then have energy in the bedroom without the help of blue chew, right? Because if they want to be champions in the bedroom, they're going to need a champion win. erection and blue chew. Champion erection. Yes. Uh, and blue chew will give you that trophy. You feel me? You feel me? Blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis or Cialis in an chewable form at the fraction of a cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of erectile dysfunction. Blue Chew is an online descript- prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door in a very discreet package. You know I mean? mm-hmm. right. It's almost like discreet you get Discreet package, but your package ain't going to be discreet. Huh, it's your gonna package is going to be knocking down the... Who is that? A, a battering ram from the SWAT police? No, that's just my meat. <laughs> 
The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you re- uh, receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work for you, work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription because some people need a little more help than others, and that's okay. All right. Mm-hmm. We can all get to where we're trying to go, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, which is coming. So <laughs> if you could benefit from extra confidence when it, it comes time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our free. promo code SK. 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 At checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's all you got to do. That's bluechew.com promo code SK. SK. To receive your first fr- um, first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. I want to stay in rap for a moment. It's official. Mm-hmm. Soldier Boy versus Bow Wow. Oh, wow. Versus. And the reason I think this is interesting, I mean, it's a great, it's a great versus for those two people. I realized Soldier Boy is the first rapper that I thought this is rap music for my kids. Because when Crank That came out, and my nieces and nephews and my, I think Zay was like two at the time, um, I felt like, hmm, rap is the current rappers are not, they're no longer rap, making rap music for me. Well, I guess I mean. Soldier Boy, his song that that threw him to stardom is about nutting on a woman's back and sticking a a, a sheet to her back. Mm. Wait, crank that? Superman that hoe? I that's, that's what that means? I did not know. Yes. I'm out. Superman that, that how do you, you now watch me no whip? No, no, that's somebody else. <laughs> What, what, you, what is it? Superman that hold me I, then? I don't know. I Soulja just thought it was boy a, huh? Watch me crank and watch me bro. watch me crank that soldier boy and, and Superman, Superman that, and now watch me you. That was this. I yeah, thought that was, that was the was dance. That was semen on the back? Skeet skeet. Stuck on your back. Oh, oh. Ah! So, that, so that's for your two year old? I didn't know. I didn't <laughs> even know that's what it meant. This is for the two year old. I didn't there wasn't no genius when the, when it came out. Yes. That's what Superman that whole Now look at who's old. Bex? Oh, Bex? No. Yeah. She said, now who's... No. Oh, I never put any thought to those lyrics. <laughs> I thought it was just... I, I just thought that was the dance. I literally had no idea that's yeah, what they were... Dance, but also... Yeah. DeAndre. You didn't know? No. Big Draco. <laughs> Soldier boy, who in and watch me. Why would you put a sheet on her back, though? Oh, I should. Superman and watch me. You. Oh, my. Because because boys are nasty. What is the sheet? What's the point, though? You make it look like Superman. What? (laughs) Skeet, skeet. Slap it on our back. So then is she just like, does she go around like this? <laughs> is she have, in on it? Does she know she's Superman? Now right. listen, I don't know if she knows. I have never been Superman. Thank God. <laughs> I think I played that at church one time I do too. more of no, Wonder Woman. I'll it. spin on it, but I'm not about to be, I'm not about to be. <laughs> I want you spin on it. Yeah, I'll spin on it, but we're not. You're not finna Superman me, yeah. man. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what I'm doing. Uh, No. Dang. Uh, Try it on Melissa. See what she. I don't think she'll be. She, she'll be like what? She would not be. But what? Black women don't be going for that. He, uh, I mean, listen. You better I, put it probably, up. Put it in the Tupperware. You ain't finna put that on me. Put it on the ground. Put it in the Tupperware. Give me. Put out. it in me around me. You ain't finna just throw it on anywhere. Clean it up. All it's on my back. Like, it's just like uh, you know. I mean, granted, yes, the music definitely sounded way more playful than what context is but that's kind of like we didn't know half the stuff that's little nas x he's actually saying cheated on my baby lean all in my bladder and the yes. kids are just like take me down to the old town <laughs> road because no, no. that little nas x point was y'all y'all mad at me this song's about adultery and doing drugs yes and y'all you shouldn't let your kids listen to that and he's saying i should let my kids listen to superman at home <laughs> i didn't realize he was saying superman that hoe i thought he said superman that oh oh no that dirt was that the though. clean version D- d- yeah. I, I mean, what that you in. know, but what you D's know, in. what'd you say? Throw some D's on it when you read it. Uh-huh. Throw some D's. On. Wait, these are not rims? 
Yes, but he redid it. Oh, these are not grades. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, okay, that, I mean, but knowing of who Soldier Boy is, like who has he is now, that makes more sense than thinking, oh, we're just dressing up in costumes. I, I feel dumb now. I thought it was just a <laughs> Melissa. Dance. Melissa didn't know uh, next. Uh, what's the next song? Too close. Too close. She didn't know that was about an erection. Oh, I love. And they, song. if you, they, they cut this part off on the radio, but it, it hard for me. <laughs> Come on, man. But the beginning of the song, he's he says, "I'm hard right now." But on the radio, they cut that part oh, off. Yeah, I haven't heard that beginning. Yeah, the beginning of the song, you can feel me. I'm hard right now. <laughs> right. But Melissa was just step back and dancing <laughs> kind of close. I feel, feel a little pop coming through. Oh, the funniest part, girl, I know you felt it. Who you know I can't help it. You know what I want to do. Oh, yeah. Feels so good. I remember the like moment I realized song. that Joe was talking about Iguchi. Joe was talking about something else. Mm-hmm. He was not talking about taking the subway <laughs> downtown. He was, I mean, technically he was, but it's a, it's a proverbial uh, subway, if you will. Uh-huh. He wasn't like swiping a Marta card. He was like, this is uptown. We going downtown. Yes. Times Square. World Trade Center stop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is the best song. I don't know if there's any song about uh, Congolingus more beautiful than Joe's. Yeah. I don't think there's another one that really. I didn't realize um, Isley Brothers. No I like the way you relieve me. Oh. Yeah. I like the way you receive me. Ooh. I like the way you, somebody pointed it out on the verses. Because, see, back in that time period, you they had to go around the Mulberry Bush. Uh-huh, now they'd be like, coochie penis inside. <laughs> I want it. Pump, pump, and pump. Pop, pop, pop. Make, back, squ- make macaroni. Squ- 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 yeah, oh. they, that's what they did. That could be a song. We're making macaroni sound. Zoodle, macaroni slip, sound. Slip, slip, slip. Macaroni sound. Slip, macaroni slip, sound. Slip, slip. Yeah. Macaroni well, style, here. macaroni style. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I like the way you receive me. I like the way you relieve me because he yeah. she doesn't relieve him of that pressure. Yes, because his pressure was up. Now she doesn't relieve him. He ain't got to take the he ain't got the lepidoral or whatever to here takes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do want to point out, Soldier Boy gets laughed at, mm-hmm. but you can almost point to him. And the transition from traditional radio, oh, absolutely, A and R, all that stuff, mm-hmm. to internet rap, yeah, literally the blueprint of the TikTok dance song stuff, all crank that, yeah, all Soldier Boy, the direct to consumer market. He didn't create that, mm-hmm. but he he took what Master P and them did with selling mixtapes out of your trunk, and the internet became the trunk, yeah, and they made fun of him. They called him an internet rapper. And he is a pioneer. Yes. And he's been screaming it for a while, but low key, not even low key. You can literally look at him mm-hmm. and him putting his music on LimeWire or not LimeWire. Uh, Lime Napster. Napster. And I, think Lime it was, I mean, he probably did LimeWire mm-hmm. too. Lime Wire. Well, that's when he was pump faking downloads. Yep. He would put, if you're looking for 50 Cent, he would put, you would, <laughs> yes, you, you go get Soldier. You go find Soldier Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, and now. Like remember, man, we me- remember like in our day, mm-hmm. you artists would come down to Capitol Records. Yeah. Sam Goody, mm-hmm. they would come down and sign, sign, sit at a table, discs. albums, yeah, and take pictures. And that's when you had to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now Sam Goody ain't even a thing no more. Fye, Circuit City, all that stuff is gone, dead, and people don't even buy albums. And you. So I don't want to say you can think Soldier Boy, but Soldier Boy, Napster, LimeWire, iPods. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, no, it's a big, it's a big difference in how things were done and how he kind of innovated new things. But I feel like that's with anything. Whenever you see the legitimate, the people who are considered legitimate picking fun of someone who is new, mm-hmm. more than likely that's the new wave. Listen, they did the same thing to Spoken Reasons. 
uh, stand-up comics mm-hmm. were so mad at him. He wasn't even saying he's a stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. They were internet comedy, internet comedy. Y'all ain't real. Y'all ain't on the mic. And then lo and behold, mm-hmm. now everybody got to be on that internet. Everybody. Everybody has made fun of him. And he wasn't even saying I was a stand-up comedian. He was just making funny videos on the internet. But you're right. It's, uh, even with reality TV stars, not to say that they are actors, but there was, you know, people delegitimize. Are uh, you just a reality TV star? And now they command just as much money as if you were on a s- fully scripted television show. Wait, you, do, is that true? Oh, my God. Like the Real Housewives? Yeah, like before then. Um, because even though they they weren't a part of the first wave, like real world road rules was. like all You that think they were making bread, though? No, 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 not yet. But like the Real Housewives, yes, they make a lot of bread. I wonder how much. I always thought, that, I, I wonder how much. I mean, I know they're like, they're almost a cornerstone franchise of E's whole programming slate. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And bringing yeah. NeNe back, I know she ain't do it for no 10K an episode. No, she was making millions per episode. She's making at least a meal probably per episode. She could command that much. Per episode? It depends. Let's see. How many episodes? They, well, listen, it's we can look 10, it up. I don't know. It's a 10. Is it a 10, 12 episode? It ain't like 26, is it? I don't. That I can't. It feels like it goes on forever. How much money does <laughs> Miss Josie said they begging the internet comments for help now. You crazy. That. <laughs> you sound like Jack A. Oh, no, no. Per season, she was making 2.85 million. But that's a lot what? of actors. A lot of actors are not hitting that. Let me tell you what I did not know. TV money, I thought was different. It's different when you are when you get to that different level. Yeah, yeah. but when yeah, you yeah. just like working, one percent of shows, huh? Like the one percent of shows. It's not so much that it. It's not so much the show it, per se because there is a standard that once you get, okay, so series regular for most networks. Mm-hmm. If you don't have any other credits before, you bought it twenty million. Per ep- not 20 million, 20,000 per episode. Series regular. Series regular. On a network TV. On like a ABC. network or cable. 20,000 per episode. 20,000 per episode, which is not small change, especially if you want a series that ends up getting like the, that is a smash hit. Let's say, for instance, uh, what's that family with all them white people? Modern family. Modern, thank you. Modern family that end up taking off, right? So there was a lot of people nobody knew. Mm-hmm. 20,000 per episode. Got it. Then they got that, they probably got an order for 13 episodes. Mm-hmm. Then they got that additional, like, nine. Yep. So, 23, uh, 22, 23 episodes at 20,000. That's a good bread. It's not something that you don't, that's over $400,000. You get to third season and you done got all these goddamn Emmys and stuff. You can command 60, 75. Ed, Ed, um. Ed, uh, the dude who played Mary, I don't, now you're talking about Ed, uh. Mm-hmm. What is his name? Him. Ed. Uh, Al Bundy. Al Bundy. Al Bundy. Al Bundy. He's coming in already, making mm-hmm. way more than that because he, he, had a whole, he had a whole season, a series underneath his belt. Ed O'Neill. He had a whole successful multicam in the 90s, so he can come in. So he was probably already making um, probably like 100 grand per episode. Now, again, we're looking at 22 episodes, 23 episodes. A season. You add two mil. Then you look look at the white women of the white men of friends. I was about to say they were making disrespectful bread. Towards those last seasons, they were making a million per episode each. Game of Thrones. And they, uh, that was like twenty two episodes, right? They had a bunch of goddamn on episodes. A million each they and were they making. I think Game of Thrones characters in the last season. Oh, not the, probably the top six or seven. Absolutely. They was getting a million per episode. Absolutely. So, um, that's real money there. It is real money, but it's real. And it's real money that what's hard, I think, for a lot of people is that when you're on this track, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's not usually the high, high up people, they're not saying anything. Right. The Jay Z's of the world weren't like internet rappers. Nah. Jay Z was like, I'm about my money. Yeah. You go ahead. So, the people making all that money don't have a lot to say. It's the people who are striving to make that money that when they see someone else going about it a different way and they're like, no, no, no. That's not legitimate. The, I'm over here struggling for the legitimate thing. That and that's the same thing with comedy. Yes, because it's this thing. It it then makes you feel dumb that you over here struggling for what you feel like is the only way to success, and you're watching someone else do it another way. That's exactly. So I had I caught some flack from the industry um, because what happens is comedians you want that 
the, the goal is to get a door deal right with the club mm-hmm. meaning uh you get a percentage of the tickets right a big big percentage of the tickets 80 percent 90 percent sometimes a hundred you know mm-hmm. certain comedians can command door deals mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. others mm-hmm. on your way up you get um a night you, they pay you a night and yeah. they'll they'll do what's called papering the room and that's like <clears throat> free tickets because remember people often forget a comedy club is just a restaurant Mm-hmm. It's really just a restaurant. Yeah. Just come here, eat, drink, we'll entertain you, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Um, so what they'll do is they'll pay the comic 200 a show or whatever, mm-hmm. and they get it doesn't matter how many tickets they sell or give away, you get 200 What was happening is internet people were coming in, taking the whole weekend. Yeah. Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> My allergies are mm-hmm. in full force. Taking the whole weekend, getting door deals, and comics were mad because they're selling out. And I'd be telling them, why are you mad at that person? The mm-hmm. comedy club booked them. They don't care who's on stage. Killing, right. bombing. They care. Tickets sold, food purchased, alcohol bought. The reason why they're mad is because the rules changed on them and they've been abiding by the rules for so long. That's and, what it was. And angel. it can be frustrating if you're like, okay, I'm going to play by the rules. I'm going to do all this yep. grinding. I'm going to make a name for myself so that you give me this money. And then you see, wait a minute, they didn't do that. And you you didn't say they could do it. You you, you why you do that? It's not fair. <laughs> you didn't say they could. But no, it is. It's That's very, true. <clears throat> it is. It's very um it can be very frustrating. Like yeah. to put all of your your I guess eggs in this basket and feel as though I'm going to abide by these rules and I'm going to make it off of abiding by these rules and then yeah. finding out. And that's the one thing that I will give the generation that's uh, younger than me, the millennials, the the real millennials um, is that their regard to the rules is as if it's like, to, the rules are dead. The okay? rules are dead. I hope the rules got policy genius because they are not coming back to life. That's right. They're never coming back to life. And <laughs> <clears throat> listen, a policy genius is the only thing that's going to be able to bless anybody after one is dead and gone. Mm. Because you need life insurance. Yes, you do. To bless your family. I, the other podcast we were talking about uh, how black folk, we be, we be arguing over uh, who got the body. When who somebody, got the body? <laughs> Who, Who got, got the, the body? body? Who take your grandma's furniture? Because I said I wanted her bedroom set. We be arguing about stuff like that. Yeah. When really, if people were able to take care of their families beyond their life, they, there wouldn't be any arguments. It yes. would be we're going to bury our papa, our grandma, our loved one in peace. Yes. And we're going to take this policy and we're going to divvy it up and live our lives. You, you feel me? I want my children. I don't want them to be happy. I'm dead. Yeah. But I don't want them. I don't want my death to add more strain. Yeah. Because you got to grieve and also plan and and find the money. Right. I want them to just just be. I, all I want is pure sadness that I'm gone. Right. That's and then it. a little bit of like, well, now that daddy go, <laughs> let me do. Right. That I don't want, don't look forward to it. Right. But I want them to be like, well, we, we gonna be all right. We gonna be okay. You know what I'm saying? Not daddy gone, but you, we all right. And I, listen, I understand. Searching for insurance can be so, it can be stressful. You're like, am I supposed to get term, whole life? What does all this stuff mean? Well, Policy Genius takes off of that stress and they help you make the process easier. And you can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius because that's what you're also trying to figure out. You got these uh, agents trying to sell you on stuff and you like, are you are you giving me the best deal possible right. or are you just trying to you pad your to, pockets? Yeah, yep. You don't know that. But Policy Genius, they're going to make sure that you are getting the best deal possible and you can save 1300 or more per year Woo! on life insurance by using policy genius can to compare you? policies yes 1300 1300 listen that's that's a lid on my god dang on spot you could get a that's a nice <laughs> lid lid because you got it down the liquidation place i got it down at the liquidation i could get a brand new lid okay not a liquidated lid uh, the licensed expert at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of shopping in the buying process. This kind of service has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across thousands of reviews on Trustpilot and Google. So, this is how you do to get started. It's super simple. You're going to hit to policygenius.com. In minutes, you can work out how much li- uh, insurance coverage you want and um, need and compare and personalize 
quotes to find your best price. And when you're ready to apply, Policy Genius team will help you handle all the paperwork and schedule um, scheduling for free, which is really great because it's a lot of stuff you have to do and you really want somebody to kind of hold your hand through the process and policy genius will do that. Policy genius never sells your information to other companies and policy genius does not add on extra fees. So this is what we want you to do. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. That's all right. And while you're alive. Okay. Oh. So that's getting your money together when you're dead. Right. Yeah, yeah. But while you're alive, you still need to have your money right. And that's why Chime is a sponsor of today's. Chime them came down to sponsor the show. Listen, I have had a many a argument at my bank, okay, when they be charging me the fees. We talked about this. I don't know. We do so much content together. Yeah, no, we were talking I'm about taking over. You used to work at a bank, and I you know sure how did. they do people sometimes. They don't care about you. They're they just trying to get these it. fees so they can make this money, okay? <laughs> well, your bank account should work for you, not against you. And Chime is an award-winning app and debit card with no hidden Fee none or monthly minimums. That's that thing that be pissing me off. You gonna tell me to put my money in this account, but you got you telling me how much I have to keep in here, or mm-hmm. you gonna charge me? All right, mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> I'm gonna put this money in a piggy bank. Well, you ain't got to do that because Chime is not here trying to do that mess. And after all, you earned your money. Yeah, you did. Okay, so you should deserve to be able to keep it. Yeah, you do. Amen. And amen. Okay, so these are some things that you get with Chime. You get um. Your paycheck, benefits, stimulus checks, and you can put it all in there with um, and get it in direct deposited two days earlier. Yeah, okay? you can. Uh-huh. All right. They've got over 3,800 fee-free ATMs Be okay, free. with Money Pass and Visa Plus Alliance. And you can turn on all your alerts so that you can block any transactions that ain't supposed to be happening. Or if you think somebody didn't try to steal your number, you can be like, hold on now. Get them out of my account. Who is it? Okay. <laughs> Uh, who's is is (laughs) it (laughs) and you can sign up for a chime speedy account and uh can enroll in an optional savings account and grow your savings automatically with a 0.50 annual percent yield that is 10 times the national average that's actually quite amazing do you understand so um listen to be able to have all these ATMs around, because who wants to pay? Because let me tell you, I don't know if y'all know this. Then Come on, get blessed right now. When you use an ATM machine that your bank does not bank with, not only does that ATM give you a fee, your bank then fees you on the other sure side. Sure do. So you try to take out $20 and you realize, but $30 has been debited because somebody charged you five on one side, five on another. So that's what makes Chime so great because you got 38,000 ATMs that you can go to. 38,000. 38,000. For free. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, now this is what we want you to do. Join the millions on Chime. Sign up. Takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Apply now at Chime.com slash SK. SK. That's Chime.com slash SK. SK. Chime is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by the Bank Corp, uh, excuse me, Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank. NA members FDIC eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases. Limits start at $20 and may increase up to $200 by Chime. Early direct deposit depends on the payer. Out of network cash withdrawals. Fees apply. Third party and cash deposit fees may apply. Go to Chime.com slash SK for details. SK. SK. Uh, s- staying in the rap community. Oh, we just uh, we hip hop. We just hip hop today. Well, man, are you excited about this versus? Were you no. a bow wow? <laughs> no, I was. Th- these both of these rappers were. I mean, respect to what they've done. Uh huh. Right. But I, I, I probably won't be tuning. It. I wasn't like. You ain't gonna get you a Tyler Perry. Uh, yeah, I like Bow Wow. <laughs> Bow Wow was doing Harlem Shake. I was like, this little mm. kid can rap. I saw like Mike in theaters. They had a great time. You had a great time. Uh, but no, I uh, have nothing against uh, Big Draco or Shad. Mm-hmm. Nothing personal. Mm-hmm. Your audience is more Scream Tour, people who went to the Scream Tour, okay. B2K, things like that. Uh, Future has a song with 42 Doug. And uh, during this, I, I let me see if I can find the actual clip. Future released a lyric, and I'm trying to find the video. 
Are you doing that um, clap, clap, clap? The fact that I can see a TikTok dance out of the corner of my eye and I know mm-hmm. what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, dang, where is it? Future? Well, you don't need to hear it. I, I can't find it. Here, found it. I don't even know. Could you hear it? What the hell? Excuse <laughs> me. I like that. I'm like, what? He said, tell. I don't remember the first. <laughs> I like, could Come up out of him, Beelzebub. <laughs> Get out of that man. Jump into the swine and jump over a cliff. <laughs> he said, tell Steve Harvey or tell Steve, I don't want her. Okay. Before we talk about this, Steve had this to say on Jimmy look, Kimmel. Man, you know, when your kids grow up, you know, look, man, they can make decisions on their own. I just saw. Uh, I'm just happy that I can at least approve of one. <laughs> you didn't approve and of the previous suitors? Nothing ever. <laughs> ever. Pure hatred. <laughs> so here's the thing that I find interesting about Future. Lloyd Harvey, and actually this is another interesting thing. Somebody commented on Twitter, I've never heard Lori Harvey speak. I don't know what her voice sounds like. Oh, that girl's a deaf mute. <laughs> was she that pretty? The Lord didn't give her no voice. She like uh, Ariel. Ariel. She lost it. Once she came up out that water, the Lord said, and you shut up. <laughs> you can't have it both. You can't have it all the ways. You ain't about to get Michael B. Jordan and be talking and whatnot. Shut up. You shut it up. Uh, that's very funny. Uh, <laughs> that, that thing. But telling why Lori Harvey has moved on on Mm -hmm. she is with killmonger now okay Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she is with without remorse come on and the 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 tell steve i don't want her you she she don't seem to be wanted by you yeah it's like but she does she gone she down with michaels b jordan yeah she down with michael b Mm -hmm. why are you why are you so you you sat in that Maybach with all that ice on your wrist Mm -hmm. And that chain on, and you sat there in that studio, you like, I miss Lori. Tell Steve I don't want her. I do, though. Is she available? Is no. She, where's she at? Rappers don't know how to say I miss you. Uh, no. They, absolutely they not. They don't know Hold how on. to play it again. Yo, you play Angel demons. don't know what she can. I had play to look again. up the lyrics. Let me scroll down. The demons. Magic City. I'm the owner. He said it already. I can't tell. I don't know. It. He did it. He, he said, said it already. It. He said it, and he must have started tour because it sounds like his voice is leaving. He needs your honey tea. <laughs> <laughs> tell the I don't wanna. It's so funny because who, who was that? Um, who was that? Uh. A uh, man who look who looked like he got uh, boozy. There we go. You knew. <laughs> oh who looked like he dying about the eyes. It looked like his skin is turning. <laughs> Y'all see it? That skin is dying. He got the. Uh, he got that. He got, he got that blind butter man. Yeah, he do. He got that. Jesus got to put that that <laughs> mud on it. Come Jesus on. got to spit on it and put that cake up on there. Yeah, put that on there because he's the skin right about here then died and then turned. <laughs> Um, you got that Mitch McConnell hand eye. <laughs> so the, you can tell the blood is no longer circulating in the lids. Um, uh, it's so funny that these, she must got golden coochie. The way these men cannot stop talking about her. Boosie never even was with her. He must have smelled it or something. Golden coochie. It's got to be golden. Like you don't, I feel like you, I, are you not embarrassed? This is not embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Like, bro, let it go. Oh. The songwriters Elsa said, let it go. Let, let it go. go. Let it she froze them. Bro. Okay? She straight up. <laughs> Elsa them niggas, and they are hurt. Okay? He did the same thing with Sierra. Like, there's a very funny running joke on Mother's Day. Future tweeted, happy Mother's Day to seven women in a row. Hey, Leticia, you, you do a great job with cash. Sharonda, uh, what's <laughs> his name? Jerry. Y'all that do. One. 
Hey, uh, he Letitia. Just carousel? He just. It was yeah, just. Yeah, should have. Tweet after tweet. So every Mother's Day on Twitter, somebody screenshots that <laughs> and puts that on. Hey, see you, you and Baby Future. Great job. All right, yeah. Who else do I got? Okay, uh, dancer. <laughs> who else? So <laughs> it's <Lieutenant> like Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph. Yes, that's the one you got. <laughs> I, 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 by the grace of God, one of my joys in life is uh, one woman, two sons, mm-hmm. all of it that nuclear. What, what she call us? Same a, last uh, name. Uh, low budget. She called y'all low budget. Low Having budget. all them kids. Uh, who was that? Uh, Sugar baby Kita. Sweet baby Kita. There you go. <laughs> So y'all, y'all having them uh, babies by that same man. Mine could never. <laughs> when my kids never. say my dad, they mean it. <laughs> Hilarious. <gasps> but uh, And this is nothing against non-nuclear f- families. That's but so future, awesome. it's been, it, let it, bruh, mm. stop. That's his whole thing, though. That, that is his whole thing. It's, a, say, it's a power so. thing. Like, she more than likely left you. She moved on. I think she's doing all right with Michael Beach Jordan. Yes, she is. So you just don't know how to deal with that pain. You do need to go to Talkspace. Come on. You know, you should go to Talkspace. Better no help. ad today. I mean, you really probably should text them. Because, I mean, that toxic masculinity. Future also, another telling thing about him. He said he stopped using lean Three year, three or four years before he stopped rapping about it. So what is lean as a drug? To mm-hmm. Promethazine. Promethazine. It's a you it's prescription down. prescription strength cough syrup. Oh, so you do? Okay, okay, that's what. Yeah, you put it, sip it on scissor. They, you put that with the sprite, dirty sprite with, with sodas. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. And so that, with more sugar. Yeah, there was a funny lyric. Money bag yo was like. Uh, he had uh, one of his lyrics, something about, man, I miss you. I, I, I can't get enough of you. I be fighting back and forth for you, and I can't leave you. And this girl's like, man, that's so sweet. And somebody was like, girl, he talking about uh, lean. lean. <laughs> yes. Talk about lean. That's exactly. He was strung up off of it. Yeah. The the <sighs> future, his brand is toxicity. And I don't know if he's just addicted to it or if it's just like he can't. He doesn't know how to reinvent himself. Not to be. I need him to take some of that goddamn going auto tune off his voice so we can understand you. I need him to go back in time and unsend those vocals to Kendrick Lamar and J Rock mm. nah. because he he won that Grammy. I don't care. Turn it back in. This is his first Grammy. Kid. I don't want it. That that's <laughs> the pinnacle of his career. You talking about? I will never. Uh, I will never forgive him for la di da di da slap bum ba na po mi si ka pa pi di pi ka. I still was can't like, understand him, and he is making money. J Rock a- and Kendrick, and you was like, mm-hmm, I love what you guys are talking about. Mm-hmm. Also, la di da di da. <laughs> he was still on that lane. Me not. He had to be. No, no, he said he was done by That's then. That's why. See, drugs usually make you brilliant. These brilliant people, they need the drugs. <laughs> Maybe he'd be nicer. Drugs. He needs the, the drugs. Drugs. <laughs> Maybe he would be nicer. But yeah, to re- I, it's so, it is very crazy how these grown men feel the need to talk so cash crazy about this girl who's a woman who has done nothing to them well, but be gorgeous. What it is. When men are like this, the woman is their possession, mm-hmm. right? Lori Harvey's on my arm. She's beautiful. My status is increased Mm -hmm. because I have a woman of this, you know, beauty Mm -hmm. and she's on my arm. Sierra, whoever it is, when they leave often on their own accord, they can't have left me. Right. Because that will lower my status Mm -hmm. because she was with me because I'm future. Now she left and she left me for Michael B. Jordan or Russell Wilson. Yeah. In this case, and you know you don't want to see Russell straight up on the the one v one, right? Because his hands are big, <laughs> he is strong. So you're not gonna whoop Russell Wilson. Like he might talk calmly and all that type of stuff, mm. but he gets chased around by 300 pound men for a living. Mm. You don't want to see that man. Now, p- <laughs> people in this uh, the uh, comments are comparing Nick Cannon to Future. The thing is, is that Nick don't ever talk. He don't need to talk his, crazy. Uh, he he just be having the alls of the children. And the fact of the matter is these women know that he has. The reason why I know is because I know one of them. They know what it is. Listen, I was at a taping of Wild and Out one time. Mm-hmm. Nick Cannon was walking to set. Mm-hmm. He had a woman lotioning his hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One on each side. Mm-hmm. He was he had PAs, people, mm-hmm. and I had never seen, and he wasn't even like arrogant about it. Mm-hmm. 
He was just like, are we going to set? I, I, my hands my knuckles is rusty. Rolling Nick Cannon together? is just oh. trying to get the black squad personally of his children. He's creating the next cast yes. while and now. You think he's going to use influencers for He like Uber. Uber like eventually we're going to go to driverless cars. Yes. Eventually Wild and Out will just be Nick Cannon and his children. And DJ that's smart. D-Rec will still be DJing. He will be. Come on. It's going to be Nick Cannon. These half of my family is the Red Squad. Y'all is the Black, black Squad. Together we'll have a full episode. At, at 100%. And he takes care of all of his folk. He's, <laughs> he takes care. I love it. <laughs> Melissa, come in. Wreck and chop. Listen to no, Hi, yes, I did. That is the other big difference. Nick Cannon be taking care of any woman that uh, has one of his kids. They ain't got to work. Listen, you going to be over there. If the prize is a baby by him and you get it, you good. You are good. And also, like, with the amount of money Nick Cannon has, them ki- that that money don't go ain't gonna phase him. It doesn't. You he keep having these kids. You think he worried about child support? He's not. He's like they not. First of all, they're not going to take him to court because they'll get less money that way. Right. He's like I'll give you more money. I'm paying for your house. He basically has he puts his scent on his women. I can tell you that because they be uh, that's my man. I'm a stick beside him. I want to do that TikTok <laughs> with Liz. Because I have so many him. videos she could just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, I'm going to stick beside I'm him. I'm going to stick beside him. They don't matter if he didn't Superman them or not. They are like, I am Nick Cannon's, and I will not talk about another woman that he is with. I'm going to be happy about the kids that yeah. I made with him. I'm going to be happy about when I'm with him. I smell like him. I might, he might have gotten his cologne from Scentbird. I don't know. <laughs> but if it did... I know how to order it, okay? <laughs> and Scent Bird is our final sponsor of today's hey, episode. Scent Bird. I actually am wearing some Scent Bird today. I, uh, it's uh, a Prada scent. I do believe it's called Candy. Oh, my goodness. It smells so good. And um, it's in travel size. So I'm about to take it with me on tour. Are you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, because y'all, have y'all ever, I only, um, you know, I upgraded myself from White Diamonds. even though Finally. It took me some time. So all the, the perfumes I wear are actually quite expensive. So um, I don't buy them as often, but I use them all the time. So to be able to have this option to be able to get high-end perfumes, yeah. okay? Yep, so yep, uh, yep. you can have the expensive taste and not end up with half-used bottles. And, um, and you can um, be able to keep trying new ones without the hassle, especially because if you think you like something, you buy, you spend $300, $400, mm-hmm. and then you find out, oh, I just don't like it anymore. You got half that bottle left. You that you got $200 still in that bottle. You, you going to drink it? No. $200. You got $200. With Simper, Ooh. I found a way to have great taste and mix up my fragrance routine without breaking the bank, whether it's Tom Ford, who is one of my favorite scents, mm-hmm. Gucci or Versace. Scentbird keeps me smelling good month after month. Okay. Okay. I got three that I liked and they were all different scents. I was very shocked that I knew how much like the scents that I like. So I have one that's sweet. I have one that smells really clean. And then I have one that has just a little citrus. I'm not a huge citrus person, but it had a little bit. What type of scents do you like to wear? On? Musk. You like musk? I like musk, man. I want that man. He chopped wood before he came over here and laid down with me. And that's that man. <laughs> it's just you like to smell like musk. a man. I want to smell like wood grain. <laughs> <laughs> I want to smell like cherry oak. They're like, that's daddy coming in there. That daddy's here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. him. I like my colonists pair up with a cigar. <laughs> okay. I can, I, can, I can feel that. I can understand that. Well, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over 600 brands. It's flexible subscription, so you can skip any month without penalties. And Scentbird lets you choose a designer fragrance, a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $16. Every month you get to pick what you want to receive so that there's no surprises. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. Choose the perfume you want to try, and then they'll send you a 30-day supply. And that's great. You take a little quiz, let you know what type of scent you, uh, you tell them what type of scent you like, and then they help 
partner or pair you with the scents that have those type of fragrances. And with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, you get up to, or excuse me, you get 30% off your first month today. That's only $11 for your first fragrance. Go to scentbird.com and use our code SK. SK. For 30% off your first month. Again, that's S-C-E-N-T bird.com for, for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just $11. And number 11. Sign on. Smell amazing. You guys, we have a really special surprise for you all today. We're doing a hot 10 with one of my hot friends. Well, it's a friend of Kevin's as well. Our we friends. are all friends. We are friends. Uh, Josh, she's a friend. Josh, she's she's friend. A, she is an amazing, hilarious, is super duper talented superstar. My best friend. Our. Our. Our friend <laughs> mrs friend. barisha webb check it out so we are so excited to welcome our very special guest for this hot 10 it is someone i know very well one of my closest friends she is like my little sister i am the gale to her oprah and she's <laughs> the uh gale to my oprah we both be sitting in the gale seat being best friends <laughs> ladies and gentlemen my sis, Barisha Renee Webb. Barisha Renee. I didn't know that was your middle name. That's my middle name. Barisha Renee Webb. Oh, hey. Renee. Hey. Come on. Barisha <laughs> Renee Webb, star. Star. The star. I mean, lead. Lead. If we went over her credits, we would take up the whole hot 10. And you know what else about Barisha? She was on ER. Three seasons. I two seasons. Want Wait, two is that what Brisha does two seasons. Yes. Two seasons of okay. was on three. That's where we met. It was so funny because I thought they were replacing me with, with Brisha. Brisha. So did you give her eyes at first? Oh yes. Brisha and Brisha was like, yeah. we gonna be friends. Yeah. I literally walked up to Angel and I said, God told me you gonna be my friend. <laughs> I was like, what role are you playing? Oh, you're a doctor. Okay, I'm fine. You're a doctor. I play a nurse. It's, it's all good. <laughs> we can be friends. So, Brisha, welcome to the show. Thank you for bringing all three of our friends. We're all friends greatly together. We are friends. <laughs> We're friends. Josh is in. Friends. Uh, Josh is friends. friends. One, two, three. <laughs> Let us do the professional thing first, Brisha. Tell us about the show you are a star of. I am the star. Yes, you are. Is it weird to say, Brisha? <laughs> It's weird to say I'm one of the stars of the hit That's show right. Run the World mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on Stars. Yeah, look at God calling the network okay. what she is. Mm -hmm. Yes, you say you gonna be a star, mm -hmm. uh -huh. a star, or a star. I got a tattoo of a star. <laughs> Chubby oh, oh, you don't even this? know where it's at. Don't show us your spot. Yes, the star. <laughs> Not knowing where your own tattoo is. <laughs> Where did I oh, wait? Give me a minute. She was I, checking her pocket. Did I get it on my left? Where did I leave it? Like, did I move it? <laughs> She's jiggling her keys. <laughs> yeah, but I was, I guess, on stars. On stars. On stars. Um, yeah, but run the world. It's about four black women who are conquering. Let me mute that. <laughs> it four black be women a who are conquering. That. Uh, I know. I would always get in trouble. And I got to turn my notifications off. Yeah, but uh, four black women who are conquering uh, Harlem and living successfully mm -hmm. and doing their thing and remaining best friends, uplifting each other, supporting each other, um, and just being humans. You know what I love about it? <laughs> One, it's, an, it's another example of a black show that's not trauma, trauma, trauma. Yes, It's yes, just yes. black folks living in the world as we do. Yes. That's Various true. levels of success. You know, it's mm -hmm. why the Cosby show uh, was great because before that it was like good time. All those shows were great. Yeah. But it was like, you know, some black people, they, they doing okay. They doing all some right. Some black folks on the home, they, they mm -hmm. got a good, good, clean job. Yes. You know. They got a good, clean job. Good, good, clean they job. went to college, they went to Ivy League school, mm -hmm. and they went to HBCUs. Yeah. And that's what I love about this show. And, you know, you know, both of the, cre well, the creator, Lee Davenport, our showrunner, Yvette Lee Bowser, iconic. Um, they're AKAs, you know, oh. so, I mean, it's a little hard in <laughs> there because I'm, like it? yeah, <laughs> I, her I'm mom is a Delta, Delta, but at heart I am because all my friends are Deltas and my mom, but she that sisterhood already. is what I was raised up in, you know, so it's great to be a part of a show that even though I'm not a part of a sorority, but I know it's aligned 
in that. that type of sister element that mm. I'm so close and dear to, you know. And you know what? And what's great is it's good to see a show where black women get to be messy like white women get to be yes. in shows. Mm, yes. Just get to be like, I'm going to have a one night stand <laughs> and then I'm going to wake up late for work. But it's yeah. not because I'm lazy. It's because I forgot. I forgot. It's because and then your friend wakes you up like Angel does. <laughs> Literally, that happened today. I'm sitting but here. But it was with... all our fault over here. Rishi was like, no, <laughs> but no, no. I was reading emails, and you know I don't read emails. <laughs> she was like, I was on top of it. It was in my planner, and they said, no, ma'am, not today. Yeah, yeah, Brisha's on top of it. This is really um, Angel. It's Angel's respecting of Brisha's stardom. Yes. Is I... the reason we're here. Brisha was like, get on the phone with me directly and talk to me. And Angel's like, ah, you're looking me in my eyes. We got to go through your people. And <laughs> yes. Brisha was like, I am my people. That's I exactly. live for the people because I am my people. I am okay, my people. I pay them people. <laughs> <laughs> I got a quick question for you, Brisha. I'm related to what we was talking about. You have your publicist full time or you'll do it when you got a big thing? Because I had one for a minute and I was just like, I ain't got enough going on to be paying y'all what y'all be asking for. I do a um I do like a three month instrument, that's, you know, that's type what of thought. thing. That's what um, I'm actually keeping them on, you know, later, I mean, for longer. Because because she has so many, so many projects. So yes. many projects. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you are so a that. rising star. Let me tell you yeah. what my friend did. Tell me what your I'm friend to, did. I'm about to put her on Oh, me flex. Me flex too, do it, it, Yes. The movie she shot four years ago. How long ago you shot that movie and it's finally coming out? Girl, you know what's about four something years ago. I look at, <laughs> I'm 17 in there. Girl, what? <laughs> uh, let me tell you what my friend did. She <laughs> bought... Her parents, a condo, cash. Come on, Brisha. Brisha Webb. That's the type of star we talk about. Brisha Webb. And let me tell you what else she did. <laughs> Made that money back oh, in Lord, a week. Lord have. Brisha Webb. You want to flex? Let me tell you what I did. <laughs> Rented my mama car for my dad's birthday. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's on me. Them. Listen, don't come for me, Gucci bag. <laughs> Gucci bag, every time I see you on the goddamn on Instagram, you on vacation. You don't even check that bag everywhere. I had one little measly vacation. And listen, he was like, and he Loki, went to the I saw and I he saw your picture you. and I was like, huh. <laughs> Liz, you see where Brisha is? I want to be there. And we literally went there because you posted about it. <laughs> yes. Love it. Come on, influencer Brisha. Well, no, if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to go on vacation. That, yes, that was me, you know, like show my booty cheeks. You know, I ain't got no kids yet. So I didn't I see that show. part. I just saw the but hotel. You know, but you know. Jesus, you know. God, that is it. That is staying. That is staying. So what has it been like to watch the trajectory of your career. I kn I've known you since your very first major job out here, which was American Mall on MTV. And then like your breakout role of I'm Unique on Love That Girl. Oh, very funny. Which everybody that is putting. You also was on. I was. I played her best friend, Latavia. And y'all also did a, another show I together. I throw what show? one of these. The one they met on. Pump. Was, it, I, was that important in your career? <laughs> Uh, to now be uh, the lead uh, in a star show, as well as currently being in quarantine to be the lead of a movie. And uh, in, she's in Canada right now uh, in quarantine because she's about to be the number one lead of a movie. Number one on the call sheet, boy. What does it feel like to uh, see your dreams actualized or are these different? Like, what does that what does that feel like for you? I mean, if I'm, I mean, if I'm honest, I really, I'm just now starting to set, you know, step back mm. and say, wow, God, wow. Like the director that I had a meeting with yesterday, she was asking me, you know, she said, have you never had your dreams come true? Like, mm. have you not had your dreams come true? Like, has everything just always worked in your favor? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Have you? Yes. And everything that wasn't for me, I'm glad it it, it didn't come to me. But oh. as of right now, I'm living in the favor. Yeah, hey, yeah, that was Shikaya. Brisha's on. parents is pastors, ain't it, Brisha? They deacons. Deacons. <laughs> Deacon and deaconess. Oh, okay. I elevated yeah. them. I just called <laughs> them. God, them, God had whispered that you don't want y'all to take over the church. <laughs> take over the church. 
take over the church. Listen, yeah. I have a question for you, Brisha. Speaking of the music and of the music uh, ministry, so yeah. He's there you go. Not. That's like a pastor of music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they you call know. them worship pastors for the music down okay, at the down at the white pastor. church. Oh, is that what they call? They call them worship no. pastors. Mm-hmm. Okay, get them in a white church. Oh. Um, <clears throat> you and Angel both have booked a lot of things and done a lot of auditions. Uh, Kevin, me, have done a lot of auditions. How do you, how do you, you and Angel both have this uncanny ability to, when you book it, it was for me. When you don't, it wasn't, and you let it go. I, I write down every person who passed on me, and I add it to a list like Arya Stark, <laughs> and I want to punish all of them. And you guys just be like, ah, oh, I didn't get that. And then you move on. How? How? Because now you're you moving on to offer only land. You know what I'm saying? Them auditioning days, ain't, they're going to be few and far between. Mm-hmm. But before then, how did you do that? Because Angel be telling me, but I don't, I don't understand. I mean, Angel's really the queen of this. I really just follow suit. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm very upset about it. And then I'm like, fine, fine. <laughs> and I call Angel and Angel makes me laugh or something like that. I get more emotional about Angel's losses. Oh, uh, so do I. My <laughs> the, the last one took me out of here mm-hmm. to a point that my boyfriend was like, I'm sorry, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not because they not my list for Angel is, str- is above my list for myself. We're ready to storm the Capitol. Oh, when Angel Listen, didn't get that last I thing, I was personal. like, tell me everybody who was a part of it. Because <laughs> yeah, I auditioned emails, for that, and I didn't season. get it either. And I was like, hey, you know, I understand. But when Angel didn't get it, I was like, <sighs> we were already fighting for her to get it. Josh, we was like, how are we getting down to Tennessee? They got cameras down in Tennessee. <laughs> they got cameras down there, do they? Uh, Breach Angel, gets, Angel's but- the, the queen of just like, it's okay. It'll be fine. Something else is coming, Brisha. You'll be Mm-mm. fine. Mm-mm. I mean, because a lot of people don't know, but before Run the World, I really didn't have a series. I didn't really have, like, I had been, well, I was blessed to be passing on a lot of things that just didn't seem like the right fit. Come on. But mm-hmm. I was not on a series. So I was just kind of from Marlin in that little gap. I was unemployed. I was working as guest stars and doing that type of thing and doing my own stuff. But it was a it was a moment that I was like, all right, God, like, so what is that? <laughs> what is that? Now you didn't let me buy this house. Now where's the you, moment? Did you start <laughs> being like, so man, did I, why did I pass on that? I probably could call them back and see if y'all in production. I was like, yet. wait a minute, call them back. <laughs> Maybe I am in a mom. Maybe I can play a mom now. I can be a mom to an 18 year Yeah, she would be like, they, they, I, I am not, she said, I'm still sexy. They're not about to try to take this away from me. <laughs> this is too early to be doing I this. I have an ab. I have an ab. <laughs> My butt is still lifted. There's still time for me out here. <laughs> she you will see this it. Was, this was literally said, the My conversation. My butt is still lifted. <laughs> the conversation. You will see it. And God made it happen. Look at God. <laughs> Look at him. Episode two. Uh, Show the booty. Yes, booty out Show there. The booty. Was this? Were you ready for this time to happen? Because she has been preparing her body for this time. She's a bona fide actress. Of listen, I know what it looked like, and mm. eventually, y'all gonna see it. Were you ready? Was this? Did you feel like you know what? This is the time. It's time for you all to see the goods. They're ready. Yeah, I've been playing this, just teetering the line. You know, I was like, do I need to start an OnlyFans to get people interested? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I look good. Right. You know, I'm working out. I want people to see it. Because I know as soon as I say, I'm going to shut it down, clank, 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 I'm going to have a baby. We don't know what will happen. We're not there yet. So let's let's see that (laughs) act. You're right. You're right, friend. Yo, you have to. Believe you can't bleep it for comedic you effect. See it through. They got to see it. They got to see it. I forget how funny you are, Brisha. I really, I you are so, I see why you an angel. Yeah. Y'all just connected on that silly kinetic silly, energy. Silly, funny. Yes. Brisha and I started stand up at the exact same time. We took classes together. It was something on my bucket list that mm. I, I convinced Angel's to my the queen friends. of, you about to do this. Oh, I am the queen of peer pressure. No, I have not used it. Tell them how it happened, Angel. Oh, wow. Tell them how it happened. Okay, is- I'll tell. 
we went to go see this dude do stand up that used to work out at the gym we worked out at, and he was selling <laughs> selling tickets to the comedy the comedy what is it called? What's the store? big one? Union. It was like the comedy store. store was the comedy like- store, and they make you sell tickets for the show. Mm-hmm. And so we bought the tickets and we went to go. Uh, we went, me, her, and our girlfriend Denor. We all went, and almost everybody was terrible, including him. <laughs> Just trash. And I was like, God dang, these people are horrible. <laughs> they out here, though. They out here. But that it really was. I said, but they up here actually doing stand-up. Mm-hmm. I was like, even though they're trash. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do stand-up before I turn 30. And, really? Yeah, they were like, okay. I said, yeah, let's let's do it. And I was going to do it without even preparing. I was just going to be like, oh, it didn't no. look like those people had prepared. So I was like. <laughs> <laughs> like it can't be worse. Right. I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to just stand up. And so another, uh, an, somebody else we know had taken these classes by from this uh, lady named Lisa called Pretty Funny Women. And I was like, okay, so we're going to take these classes together. <laughs> so we took this, what, what, how many weeks was that course, Brisha? Was it six? Like six weeks. Six. So. And we did our first show in December of 2009 oh, geez. at the Comedy Union. Wow. At the and union. we, at the and union. we <laughs> murdered. Built it. I bet you did. It we was, were booked. I bet you did. Booked. And we, we were supposed booked. to do five minutes. I think I did 12. Brisha did 15. Our <laughs> teacher was like, oh, okay, guys, <laughs> you're wrapping up. The light. Like, you what? you <laughs> see that? <laughs> Just like, what's <laughs> that light? We got the place lit. So y'all ran the light, y'all first go around? Uh, what light? <laughs> we what were I'm the saying. light. <laughs> we were the light on My the God. stage. We were. Jesus is we were. <laughs> but Brisha And it was great. It was perfect because it was right when I was starting Love That Girl. Mm-hmm. And they literally was like, you got to get on stage and start doing stand-up or you're not going to understand this. So Angel was like, we going on stage and we going to do this. And I was like, okay, well, that's all right. I know right now. <laughs> It was so good. It was so good. She had a whole joke, and we're about to let you go because we didn't did our hot 10 to a hot 10. I'm having so much fun. Y'all keep me here all day. You know I'm alone. She used to do this. <laughs> I'm alone. Do your uh, Rihanna oh, joke. Do your Rihanna uh, joke. Do your bring your Rihanna joke back. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I, I you know you, you know don't what, remember I, it? I gotta protect my mouth because you know what I was about to say I smoke too much for this <laughs> I don't remember this you said uh, she was like why Rihanna oh I said sit- why Rihanna always sound like she just waking up on the track on the track she be like I I I I you can say whatever, I'ma do whatever. <laughs> so high. I <laughs> so high. It's so high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so high. Yes. I got them. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you're so great, Brisha. Oh man, listen, Brisha, I am. We are both just so godly proud of you. Proud, you know, we <laughs> just, we're so glad. You know, you moved down to LA over there from that Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody didn't make it. Some people came home back home, and we was proud of them too because they tried. They tried. Hey, Amen. But Amen. you, Brisha, God is just—he's got his hand all over you. We just, we just <laughs> pray in a prayer, a hedge of protection. She doesn't went from a show coming now. To quarantine for something else. Oh, Come when on. God opened the floodgates. Yeah. The Bible said the blessings will be pressed down. Mm-hmm. Shaking together. Shaking. And running over. Run. As men are good. Something about the bosom. Bosoms. It's something in about your bosom. breasts. It's running. in the titties. Something running. about the bosom going to come yes. out. And we just play, playing a, sh- a shaking together and running over. We, we, we want you to be passing on stuff that you would have just killed for. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, the song writer said, pass me not, old gentle savior. But now you're passing hey. on them roles. You're passing yeah. on them. Yeah, passing on things you used to audition for. Hey, come on, come on. somebody. Wow. So, t- <laughs> so t- <laughs> tell the people where they can watch your show, how they can get access to it and all that. Dear, dear, dear. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for the Sunday service. <laughs> Uh, they can watch Run the World on Stars. I know it comes on at 8.30 on Sundays, but it's on the app uh, Sunday at midnight. So tune in every Sunday night, uh, Run the World. I got Meet the Blacks coming out June 11th. 
Um, Cat Williams, Mike Epps, Lil Duval, King Batch, everybody named Mother. It's hilarious. You'll love it. Um, also, oh, Housebroken. Oh, yes, on anime the show. I have an animation coming out uh, May 30th on Fox. Nice. Yes. Starring Lisa Kudrow. It's about some pets that yes. start going to therapy. And I <laughs> pets this. going to therapy is a great pets. premise. Yeah. It's amazing. I play Nibbles, who is a hamster that ate her husband. So. <laughs> I can't wait for this show. Yeah. I'm all in. Great. And Proud Family on Disney whenever that's coming. You just going to throw that out like yeah. any one of those jobs would be enough. You, oh, yo, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm on Disney too. With the she he said got the me during the pandemic. pandemic. Come on. All of the things. All of the things. Well, Brisha, we are so grateful that you were able to make time for us at Here's the Thing from your busy and booked schedule. We know mm -hmm. that the you audience will it. thoroughly enjoy all of your projects. Y'all can follow her at Brisha Webb on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, we thank you for tuning in to another episode of Here's the Thing, everyone. We love you very much. Patreon bonus episode coming later this week mm -hmm. on the app. And it's already on Patreon. And um, come see us in Tacoma this weekend. Mm -hmm. And the following weekend. The in debut. the tour. I want to come. The as you know, like Brisha, you got you, 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 you come. Oh, yeah. No, we ain't we coming come to Canada. Canada we, could, we, we looked yeah. into it. They said, no, nah, mm. a lot of restrictions mm -hmm. in Canada. A lot of restrictions. The week I after the debut. I'm still restricted. I, of that chick angel I'm, in her hometown in of hometown. Lexington, Kentucky. Rip. And them tickets are selling. All right. We'll catch y'all later. Bye. 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 Thank you, Brisha. Thank you. That was so much fun. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another thing of fire. With my boy Kev on stage And that chick angel